Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to go through some examples of finding firm cost functions. In my table here, the columns show you what cost functions I'm going to be looking for. Now, total cost is the total cost that the firm incurs as a result of producing some good. Now, typically our total cost function can be decomposed into those costs which are fixed. That's fixed cost or FC and our variable costs, which are VC. We can take the average of all of these different costs. So we can have average total costs or ATC, average fixed costs, which is AFC. And lastly, we can have average variable costs, which is AVC. Now, when we take the average, we're thinking about the cost per unit that we produce. So in each case, we're dividing by Q, which is our quantity variable. Lastly, we have marginal cost or MC, which is the cost of producing one more unit. Now that's going to be the change in our total cost divided by the change in quantity. And when we're dealing with continuous cost functions, this translates to the derivative of total cost with respect to quantity. So let's think about our first example where our total cost function is 50 plus 50 Q squared plus three Q. Now our fixed cost is going to be that part of our total cost function that doesn't depend on the quantity that the firm produces. So it's going to be any constant or any term that's not multiplied or divided by our Q variable. Now in this case, it's just going to be 50. To find variable costs, we look for any term or terms in our total cost function whose value does change with the level of production. So any term that's multiplied or divided by our quantity variable Q. So in this example, it's 50 Q squared plus three Q. Now our average total cost is just going to be total cost divided by Q. Now that's 50 plus 50 times Q squared plus three Q all divided by Q. And that actually simplifies to 50 over Q plus 50 times Q plus three. Our average fixed cost is fixed cost divided by Q and we saw our fixed cost is 50. So we get 50 over Q. Our average variable cost is our variable cost divided by Q. And since our variable cost is 50 times Q squared plus three Q, we divide all that by Q and that actually simplifies to 50 Q plus three. Lastly, in order to find our marginal cost, we take the derivative of our total cost function. Now, we, if we do this, the 50 drops out, two multiplies the 50, and we take one off each of the exponents, and we're left with 100 times Q plus three. If taking the derivative is confusing for you and you don't understand what I just did, I'll link to a video that I did, uh, which is focused on introductory calculus for economic students, and hopefully that will help. So that's our first example done. In the second example here, our total cost function is just, just a constant. So there are no variable costs here, only fixed costs, which are 600. Variable costs are zero. Using our formulas for average total cost and average fixed cost, we see that they're both equal to 600 divided by Q. Average variable cost is just not applicable because there are no variable costs and marginal cost is actually zero. We can tell this because the derivative of a constant is always zero and intuitively, if there are no variable costs, then as we increase our production, the costs do not change. And that is to say that the marginal cost of an additional unit of production must be equal to zero. In the third example, our total cost has no constant, so there is no fixed cost component. Now it follows from this that our total cost uh, is equal to our variable cost, which is 4Q squared. Average total cost will be equal to average variable cost, which is equal to 4Q, and average fixed cost is just not applicable here. Marginal cost will be the derivative of our total cost function, which here is equal to 8Q. Now in our fourth example, we don't have our total cost function. We have our fixed cost and our variable cost functions. So what we need to rely on is understanding that total cost can be thought of as the sum of fixed and variable costs just added together. 
So if fixed cost is 20 and variable cost is 3q, then our total cost will be 20 plus 3q. Now the other functions will follow from this. So average total cost is, well, it will be 20 plus 3q divided by q, which is 20 over q plus 3. Average fixed cost is 20 over q, and average variable cost is 3q over q, which is 3. And lastly, marginal cost is equal to 3, which is the derivative of our total cost function. Now in our last example, I only have my average total cost function. But since average total cost is equal to total cost divided by q, it follows that total cost is equal to average total cost times q. I just multiplied both sides by q. So we can actually find our total cost from our average total cost function. For instance, in our example here, average total cost is equal to 3 divided by q plus 4 plus 8q. Well, then total cost will be this function all multiplied by q, which is, if we expand the brackets out, 3 plus 4q plus 8q squared. Now here, our fixed cost is 3, that's the constant. Variable cost is just going to be the rest, so it's 4q plus 8q squared. Average fixed cost is 3 divided by q, and average variable cost will be, well, 4q plus 8q squared divided by q, which simplifies to 4 plus 8q. Our marginal cost, we're going to take the derivative of our total cost function again. The 3 drops out, 4q ends up to be 4, the 2 comes out, multiplies 8, so we get 16q. So before we finish the video, there is some other patterns here that are worth noting that might help you if you didn't see them already. And that is that average total cost is always the sum of average fixed cost and average variable costs. And we can see this from any of our examples. So in this first example here, we have the terms 50 over Q and 50 times Q plus three. In the fourth example, we have 20 over Q and three. Now this follows from the fact that we can understand total cost as being fixed cost plus variable costs. So average total cost is just average fixed cost plus average variable cost. We can also do some other tricks with our average fixed cost and average variable costs like we did with our average total costs. If we multiply each of them by Q, we find our fixed cost and variable costs respectively. All right, that's it. I hope that that helped you uh, understand a little bit more about the algebra I have some other videos on costs that might interest you. Uh, I'll link them to them below. Um, I just hope that you guys are having a really good night or day.